engineering a better mask. That's right, and Dina Bear is here with more on the new and improved designs from researchers right here in Chicago. They're known for big science, supercomputers, and sequencing proteins. But at the same time, scientists at Argonne National Laboratory simply want to make better masks. They've been working on ideas since the early days of the pandemic, and now they're ready to roll them out. So we're at Argonne National Laboratory in the Applied Materials Division. It's a behind-the-scenes peek at the research conducted in the 1,700-acre campus in southwest suburban Lamont. So when the pandemic hit, a lot of us were working from home, but there was sort of a call to arms. Which precursors do you have loaded up now? Jeff Elam and his colleague, Anil Main, work with chemical coatings and materials. When COVID-19 hit, they had an idea that inspired them to quickly return to their lab. So the masks that you and I are wearing now are intended to, you know, prevent droplets from coming out of our mouths and infecting other people. So it will capture those droplets, but they still remain infective. If you could kill the microbes, then you could, you could make them even more effective to reduce the spread of the virus. They started tinkering with an N95 mask you'd find at a hardware store. So once you take out the mask material, there are different layers. N95s contain an electrostatic layer of material that catches tiny viral particles. It's what makes them so effective. But the Argon team believed a chemical coating would make the workhorse even more powerful by killing the viral particles caught in the fibers. And we want to modify this material. With they experimented on small pieces of N95 material, running the samples through this tube, where vapor pulses applied a specially formulated antimicrobial coating. And what we want to do is to put a coating not just on the surface of of that fabric, but inside of every one of the little fibers that are used to make that mask so that it can be very effective at killing the virus. On the left, a chemical coated layer of material. On the right, a regular sample. And we put this inside and after coating, you see that you have a very nice uniform coating along this mask. Once they found the right formula, they tested their catch and kill material layer against bacteria and viruses, including a SARS-CoV-2 surrogate. We tested this mask with the antivirus as well as antibacterial uh, samples, and it's worked greatly. So the coatings themselves are very general. Although we developed them for N95 masks, we think we could just as easily put them on things like gloves and on protective eyewear, and even on filters that are used for buildings. Tucked away in a corner of the massive campus, more mask research is underway. We are in the electrospinning lab. Material scientist Yu Pang yeah. Zhang and her team have been spinning nanofibers since April. Making a, a new N95 uh, filter material that can be an alternative solution to the commercial N95. It's made on what looks like a high-tech loom. The jets spinning fibers 1,500 times thinner than a human hair. Their special polymer solution contains antiviral ingredients that get embedded into the fibers. We put the antiviral compound or nanoparticles into the electrospinning solution. So in the way, we actually embed the antiviral ingredients inside of the nanofibers. The material is designed to be a filter inside this shell. This is a filter material. Both the mask shell and thin filter are reusable and washable using common soapy water, alcohol, or bleach solutions. And the fibers contain an extra virus fighting property. When people wear masks for a long time, it's very uncomfortable and you have a hard time to breathe. So it's the thinner that you, you have a better face fit and also uh, have more uh, comfort bonus when you wear them. The design isn't just for healthcare workers. The thin layer can be applied to any piece of cloth. It's so just a regular bed sheet from bed, bath and beyond. And this is our fiber on top of it. The entire team has been working tirelessly, hoping they can make a difference on the front lines of the pandemic by bringing their ideas to the assembly line. And we're here we are trying to advance the manufacturing of the United States. Much of the work at Argonne is supported by the Department of Energy, and now the scientists there hope to hand off their ideas to large-scale manufacturers who can bring their masks to the masses. Back to you.